blood work, it's not the greatest controller of kidney mm-hmm. health management. Your trend is more important than the actual figure. Let's say you start your cycle. Your creatinine is 110 and you're training intensely. You're having creatine as a supplement. You're eating a high protein diet. Six weeks later, you've put on four or five kilos of muscle mass from going back on cycle. I probably expect that person's creatinine to maybe go up from 110 to about 115. Now, if that person's baseline was 110, they're six weeks on cycle, it goes to 115. And then six weeks later, at the end of the 12 week cycle, your creatinine is now about 145. That change in trend now to me is, well, either you've put on 15 kilos of muscle mass mm-hmm. or, or something's not right with the kidneys where yeah. more creatinine is going into your bloodstream. I see a lot of guys that, that had proteinuria was able to reverse it. Uh, but that's never really to the point that they had like a plus three or, or severe album, albuminuria where, you know, they're beyond help because at some point you just have to tell them to stop. I'm sure uh, Dante Trudell could have some horror stories because everybody went to him yeah. to the point he's just like, he's exhausted because it keeps happening. Um, and it's it's weird because it seems that a lot of bodybuilders still don't control their blood pressure or manage their oxidative stress um, or avoid compounds like FTTP. An adipotide, you know. Kurt, did you ever get like in your coaching career, like guys with severe kidney problems that were irreversible? No, I have a current client who has some ongoing kidney issues with infections in his kidneys, but he's under care of several mm-hmm. doctors. Um, okay. Not sure exactly what's causing that. Yeah, okay. I saw that Ben Chow did a show and he had uh, some proteinuria, he had some kidney issues. And he was able with a lower dose and some mitochondrial peptides, was able to keep everything under control while he was prepping for a show. So that's an anecdotal report of one, um, that it is doable to get back on stage. Of course, he didn't post his blood work results, but what I understood from the Instagram stories is that his kidney function actually improved during this contest prep. He kept the dose just moderate. And he credits the the improvement of the blood work regarding the kidney markers to the oxidant or to the mitochondrial peptides like MOD C, SS31, and et cetera. Now there isn't really much in the scientific evidence to support it, these mitochondrial peptides, but you would say that upregulating mitochondrial function and reducing oxidative stress should have some overlapping benefits in the kidneys. My kidney markers did not improve over the last year that I've been using these. Um peptides but then again my kidneys are functioning perfectly fine my creatinine is a little bit elevated but it's not something i'm worried about you know did you guys see anything any improvement from certain compounds in in kidney markers besides estragalus root extract that is able to lower creatinine to a certain extent and growth hormone to a certain extent not not really i guess like even what you said there about peptides improving Kidney function are not seeing an improvement in kidney function on blood work. I think it's it's very selective because you have to then view do those peptides influence creatinine metabolism and the fact mm. that, you know, mechanical breakdown of muscle tissues can release creatinine and, and you're gonna have an increase in creatine kinase activity. I think uh, I am very skeptical. Like blood work, like I said a few moments ago. It's not the greatest controller of kidney mm-hmm. health management. Um, yeah. like you, you could, you could have a very high creatinine value. And what I often say to people is your, your trend is more important than the actual figure. Mm-hmm. So, right. so let's say in, in the UK, I'm not sure of, of uh, milligrams per deciliter for the US. I always have to use a calculator, but for, for the UK, the, the cutoff, I think, is around 125 for creatinine in the, the normal mm-hmm. range. Mm-hmm. Um, let's say you start your cycle and your, your creatinine is 110 and you're training intensely, you're having creatine as a supplement, you're eating a high protein diet and then six weeks later you've put on four or five kilos of muscle mass from going back on cycle 
I probably expect that person's creatinine to maybe go up five or six. So go from 110 to about 115. That to me is a normal trend. That And then that's a steady trend because they haven't influenced any of the factors that affect it, like training, um, creatine intake, dietary protein. They've kept all the variables the same, so there's no change in bias. Now, if that person's baseline was 110, they're six weeks on cycle, it goes to 115, and then six weeks later, at the end of the 12-week cycle, their creatinine is now about 145. That change in trend now to me is, well, either you've put on 15 kilos of muscle mass <laughs> or or something's not right with the kidneys where yeah. more creatinine is going into your bloodstream. I, I, again, you come off cycle, you lower that creatine kinase activity, you lower, obviously, your muscle protein synthesis with being back to like either, you know, TRT or whatever, that naturally you might see that creatinine level fall. And what maybe you might reflectively see is you're going from 145 back then to that baseline of 110 before you went on cycle. That sort of return into your baseline number and your trend is saying, okay, well, something changed at that end of week, 12 week cycle, whether it was oxidative stress or whatever, which was causing more creatinine to come back into the bloodstream. But now being back at TRT, you're back to your baseline creatinine. Returning to that baseline number doesn't tell you that you didn't do damage to your kidney at that 145. It's just saying that all variables considered, you've gone back to 110. And so you again, lost all your gains. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's that your muscle mass is the same <laughs> as before the cycle. <laughs> It should well, stay elevated uh, by two or three points, uh, so you know you're keeping yeah, some yeah. of the muscle mass. <laughs> you know, in this and, and that's that. That's just an example of like if if you ended up with a very high number and then coming off cycle and going back to like your baseline TRT. And I'm talking like you know, let's say you go back to TRT and you're at the end of your eight or nine weeks TRT before going back on again. Yeah. At at that point, again, it's not like green light that I've not done any damage to my kidneys. It's it's a sanity check, but the sanity check is basically, okay, should I be doing 3D diagnostics or not? Not, okay, let's just go back and cycle again. So the, the use of blood work, you should be trying to do further calculations. So the, the crockford gelt equation is the main one that uses BMR. Even though BMR is very flawed, mm -hmm. it, it sort of can assess your body mass ratio towards your kidney filtration. And then it's able to deduce is that creatinine value coming from muscle mass. So it, it changed the calculation slightly. Right. And then you've got the cystatin C creatinine calculation, or I think it's called the epi calculation that uses both values. And you can add in other variables to the calculation in terms of ethnicity, age, height, weight. And also if you suspect that you've got unstable kidney function it'll change the GF4 with a, an error uh, ratio on it, add it. So then you can then actually then get a relatively good understanding of well, how well are my kidneys working? Because you have to view, e EGF4 was designed for when a drug has to be administered IV, how well can the kidneys take this brunt? Because the kidneys are going to take that drug very quickly that if kidney filtration rate is very poor, there's a likelihood that that drug administered intravenously is going to damage the kidneys, potentially irreversibly. So it's a, a risk decision matrix as well. Um, with even if you're going to have contrasts, yeah, CT I was scans. Just bring this yeah, a gallonidium contrast and iodine, they, make, they check your kidney function first because it's very heavy on the kidneys. And normally what they do is they'll do a, it's, it's basically what, what the sort of term is an excessive hydration protocol that as soon as they administer the contrast agent, they excessively flush the kidneys to dilute that compound down very quickly. Um, it's like a shunt procedure, but you know, even in that case, if let's just say someone doesn't check their kidney health, and decides from listening to some of our education, I'm going to book in for a CT angiogram. 
when they do the follow up prior to giving the contrast agent, they might well find out that there's actually something wrong with your kidneys. That they will find that out before because I do extensive testing for the kidneys. Correct. Before and I had to argue one time because my creatinine was elevated. Said so your creatinine is too high. So well, I have more muscle mass. I take creatine, and I, I train pretty hard. Um, so please check my cystatin and see blood urine nitrogen etc. And they're like, okay, your kidney function is actually fine. Um, so this is something you have to argue with the doctor as well as a bodybuilder. Say, okay, your creatinine might be one point six, one point seven even, uh, which is linear to your body weight and training intensity. And then they might not even accept you. I've heard this from several bodybuilders as well. So yeah, they didn't want to do galanidium contrast or radioactive iodine for a CT scan. So then you will run into this issue where you actually need to stop training, stop creatinine, and and uh, overhydrate yourself for two weeks leading into the CT scan. So you qualify and your, your kidney markers are actually in an acceptable range for the doctor. You know, um, So this is always a bit of an issue. Like the, the more muscular you get and the more gear you take, the further you get away from what is accepted in the medical field. And you might be perfectly healthy, uh, but on paper, it doesn't look that way. Um, you know, and then you can't even do the ultrasound or the CT scan. because <laughs> your pay- It's the same as blood donations, right? Yeah, your hemoglobin is way too high, bro. You can't donate. <laughs> what am I going to do now? <laughs> you know, <laughs> let me take care of some of this hematocrit. And so, you know, these are the problems you run into. But it's, it, it's all self-induced. Right? It's, we do it to ourselves to get so far away from the medical field and what's generally accepted. So you need to wisen up and, you know, be a little bit ahead of the curve. 